Well, it looks like our piece of equipment's here. Good morning, everybody. We are working ground again. Uh, you might notice I, my tires look a little different today. That other tractor, we needed to go put on the stell beater. This is too wide. <laughs> we can't turn with the stell beater. You know, I prefer to work ground with the tire tractor just because the track tractor berms my ends. So every time you travel your ends, you gotta drive over those berms. Basically speed bumps everywhere in the field. Finish that field across the street uh, yesterday. It's works ground. Philip called. We actually have a local dealer in town, the equipment dealer. He's actually bringing out a piece of equipment for us to demo. We're gonna try it out for a few acres just to see how we like it. We're not gonna buy anything this year. It's a lot of money. Uh, we, we're, uh, we spent playing this year. Well, it looks like our piece of equipment's here. It's on the wrong colored tractor. I don't know what one of those is doing on the farm, but I mean, I guess it's okay to pull out a piece of equipment with it. Red tractor. Somebody must like them. They're unhooking it from this red beast here. Uh, they want us to hook it on our tractor. That way, put on the tractor do we use. Here it is. It's a, it's a Lemkin implement. It's called a Karat. It's European, so everything's in, in metric measurements. So we're going to put it on that. He tells me I shouldn't have a problem pulling that. He says this tractor actually will pull it. This is only a 310. Uh, the 320 I've been running, he said would pull it. It's not as fast as I'm wanting to go. So, I don't know, we'll see. We'll get it on this 360, see how fast it'll pull, but I don't know. It looks pretty impressive. We just got going, doing our first pass. We're making a few adjustments here. We're trying to work a good 12 inches down for our spud bed we don't want to go any deeper than that we don't want to pull up any more rock than we have but if you look at the residues it's pretty impressive the residue management we have with this tool when you compare that to what i'm got behind that dmi that disc ripper uh it's a, it's completely different well i've got richard from lemkin here helping me we're getting this thing set up this optimally we want to be able to just go across it once and not have to go back across it again and from what we've been digging in it and the corporation that we can see, I think we could get away with it. We're gonna let Philip run that for a minute. I'm gonna go hop in the DMI and go right down next to what we've just worked with this, just so we can get a comparison of what the two are doing. I'm pretty impressed with what this thing will do. Be a night and day difference between the two. Hop back here in the T. Quiet. Looks a lot different back there. That Lemkin is working width of 16 feet, and this is a working width of 14 feet, and I'm only going 0.2 mile an hour faster with this and covering less ground. I think I like that better. 
oh well you can see what the difference of what I'm working back here woo, right here versus working over there I have a lot more straw on top which is interesting because I have discs up here in the front turning the residue the straw trying to help incorporate it but my ripper doesn't do any, really anything for incorporation it's just going through shattering hard pan breaking up the ground um, trying to soften up the ground and the shank spacing between that is two feet the spacing between that other one I believe he said was 11 inches so less than half of what this is and then those shanks just the way that points design it's so volatile on the ground and gets it turning so much it just does such a good job of incorporation and then the roller on the back so the way that thing works and I'll take you over I'll show you some more is you lift the lifting wheels all the way off the ground all the way is on the draw bar on the back of the machine and on the roller on the very back so a lot of compaction on that back end which breaks up those dirt clods it makes a big difference let's get up here and we'll stop and go walk back there and take a look at the difference I just find it crazy how well and how smooth I mean this the ripples that you see that's the roller on the back but how smooth and how much less residue there is on the top let me take you back here and show you this is the carat that blue lemkin and here is what I've got with the DMI you can see the waves in it but you got a lot more you know dirt clods this will break down you know over the winter as we get the frost in it the residue difference between this and this looking at it so right here you're gonna have a hard pan because of how much space is in between those shanks there's just bigger spacing and that's why we double work with this piece is because of that high spacing I come in and work at one angle and then I work at another angle so I can get all that hard pan pulled out with this blue lemkin I think we might be able to get away with only uh, only working across it once, which saves time and fuel, which are two things I'm all about saving. Well, I just finished doing two rounds next to that uh, Lemkin where we worked with it, uh, or Karat, I guess is what the implement's actually called. Now I'm gonna go grab a shovel, we'll go dig in it, look at it, see what the difference is between the two, see how much of a difference there is. That'll be the true test of what it, that machine's doing versus this machine. There's the line, you can see right here. The line all the way down through the field. This side is DMI, this side is Karat. Shovel. So this side with the Karat is pretty evenly all the way through there all worked there wasn't really a hard spot in any one spot this side you can tell where the shank went I the shank went right through here right down that and that's a soft spot and then right over here off the side of it there I got a, more of a compaction so it goes up and down makes more of a wave it's definitely soft where the shanks are I dare say it's even just a little bit softer on top because it doesn't have as much compaction from the roller on the back side but it is not as consistent when you get down deeper. I have more hard spots this way. With the carat, it's just really consistent the whole way through. We have to thank our local case dealer. That is uh, who's brought this out to us for us to demo. So I have my case salesman, and then there is our Lemkin area rep, I would assume he is. I don't know. He's a Lemkin rep. I'm gonna assume he's assigned our area. He's the one that's out here. That's who was on, on the camera a little earlier.
We went out across the spud field. You could definitely feel the shank in the tractor. We were actually probably working a little deeper with this than we were with our uh, DMI or disc ripper. These sweeps, there's just a lot you're pulling through the ground. It's 12 centimeters wide. You look at how many shanks you got through the ground and the spacing on them. And you're not leaving anything that's not disturbed on one pass. It covers everything. The interesting thing about Lemkin is the lift wheels here, they are actually off the ground. There's no weight on lifting wheels as you're going down the field. All the weight is back here on the roll on the packer. All the weight is here and on the draw bar up front. So to change your depth of what you want to work at, you adjust the tongue of the implement and you adjust how much your height is right here. You can see on, on this bar right and right here. That's your depth gauge. And so you just raise and lower that. And so actually as you're going through the field, if you get into a spot that's you know shallow, you got some rock, you can actually feather it up so you're still working in the ground and lift it, but you're still doing full working depth that you want to be set at. You're not using your lifting wheels. Just a neat thing that you can do with it. She's burning some fuel though. Bill says that uh, he was watching the fuel and it's consistently about 17 gallons an hour to pull this thing with a 360 horse tractor. So <laughs> yeah, she'll burn through some fuel, but man, she does a good job. We're going to call it a day. <laughs> oh, I think Bill's trying to figure out how to drive a red tractor. We don't know how to drive these things. Well, red ones. I know how to drive a green one, but I don't know how to drive a red tractor. What is that? Ooh, funny looking tractor is what that is. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys later. Hang on. Only one way to know for sure, so. Listen to the radio, that's how you know. Dang that coon. Lived there last year too. Well, one of them did. It, it fell out and met its maker, but. Anyways. All right.